Oh, oh, brilliant. So this is the tent in Wales. This is the smoking tent in Wales, yeah. We're, we're, I love it. We're like Bedouins. We're at, what, what it's like, it's like Ab Fab you know, uh, when, when they do the trip to Morocco. Excuse me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is my sister Patsy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was going to say hello, Patsy, but I'm going to. I'm just going to pull back just before that. Suzanne. So this is Suzanne. Hi, Hiya. Rajan. Hi. Yeah, I'm not Patsy. I'm Suzanne. <laughs> <laughs> and Catherine, who can be Eddie, is is in just getting cooking supper at the moment. Okay. <laughs> Got it right there. One yeah. sister is sat in the tent with you. Yeah. The other sister cooking. <laughs> Yeah, so, so I liked your blog today, by the way. I thought it was really good. Oh, thanks a lot. Yeah, so I, I tweeted it and then put a load of other tweets underneath it with all the stuff, that, you know, why why George Barder is wrong. You know, okay. I, thought you, I mean, when you at the end of his first sort of like going on bit and you sort of said, uh, well, I let you go on a bit, <laughs> you know, because I don't want to be interrupting all the time. But, you know, it kind of helps if you keep your answers a bit shorter. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, oh. I mean, the thing is, he is really nice. Uh, so it's important to be civil. But at the <laughs> same time, at the same time, you know, it's really obvious that uh, it's quite hard to... I didn't edit it. So w w when I sold it to him, I said, you'll be able to say what you want and I won't interrupt you. And then when I stopped recording, he said, well, you know, of course, the good thing about this sort of thing is that you don't get interrupted. But of course, you did interrupt me, didn't you? And I thought, OK, fair enough. <laughs> well, I, but the point is, he he's not the most interesting person in the world to listen to. And he's trotting out just a whole bunch of sloganeering sort of nonsense, really. You know, one, one and a half percent, two degrees, all the lies. Yeah, I mean, my tip be my tip be because he thinks that I agree with him on everything. Do, do you think? Do you think that might be it? That no, I, I'm that I'm curious, no. but at the same time, I need to be yeah. explained to. No, I, I I think it's a lot worse than that. I just think he thinks he's so bloody bright and so clever. Everyone should shut up and listen. And what can you possibly argue with him about? So. If you watch that uh, Bank of Ideas thing, the Mark Windows thing, where I think he appears in, in uh, that, I think he's in it, right? Um, uh, and you listen, um, the people, there are real grassroots activists there. And, and Frances Leader's article on her Steam It is very good about all this too. And um, at the beginning of Extinction Rebellion, they clocked it immediately that it's all the same people that were involved in the Occupy infiltration including him. I mean, you know, and it's Mark Windows that said he, he suspected he was a, an, an MI5 plant. Um, and, I, you know, I, I don't doubt it for a minute. I mean, it, he, he kind of reacted to that in a, you know, in, in, well, in a perfectly acceptable, spookish kind of way, you know. <laughs> you, mean, you, mean when I, you mean when I asked him directly? Yes. Yeah, I thought that was great. Yeah, because I kind of mixed asking him directly and saying, this is what is being said. Um, but it's the same thing with David Graeber as well. It's no, no, not a question of mine but that, that, that Graeber was a, a CIA um, asset. And being a CIA asset doesn't mean that you're actually in it or a spy or, or even necessarily on the payroll. They, they could have something over on you. But the original Wikipedia article on um, Extinction Rebellion, OK, there was a big letter that everyone signed, including David Graeber. Right. And there were a bunch of people on that letter that you wouldn't have associated with such an obvious sort of establishment fake activism movement. So I, I think at the beginning, um, when, when all the um, crackdown started in 2017 on the Internet, the first purges were sort of 2016, 17, 18. Right. Um, mm. So when the COVID one started as well, they basically just just went down another layer, as it were. <clears throat> but <clears throat> at that time uh, of Extinction Rebellion, uh, 
I th- it was kind of a three line whip. So people more or less came in from the cold. They had to pin their colours to that mask for the big push. And I think that was the big push going into the whole COVID-19 narrative, which did kick off with the repo spike in 2019. There's, there's just no question about it. Um, mm. So, uh, you know, I thought your I thought your blog today was brilliant. Um, you know, and it, it's kind of it it weaves through, you know, ha- how it how it fits together. You know, you know, uh, Sajid Javid selling G stuff and Singapore, you know, literally the same thing. That the people who caused the mess being paid to clear it up, and then also in their pay as well, is you've got a bunch of middle class toffs like like Barda, um, uh, like Jem Bendel like Dr. Rupert Reed, like uh, Caroline Lucas, um, all of who are completely ignorant about business. They're completely ignorant about the monetary system, the economic system. And um, you and I know from helping David when he ran against um, Bartley and, um, uh, and, and Lucas in 2015, that was now, wasn't it? Um, yeah, 16, 16. You know, I, I, yeah. I, I mean, I was talking to people on the monetary committee of, of, of the Green Party uh, around that time as well, and um, th- their policy EC661, uh, which was the um, sovereign money creation clause in their manifesto, which was incidentally very similar. The 2015 Green Manifesto and the 2015 UKIP Manifesto, you can hardly put a fag paper between them, Right. But they, but at that point, they hadn't been infiltrated. I, don't, I think um, I don't. You see, you keep quite, agreeing. It, uh, both, both. Yeah, okay. And yeah. Because Farage has been turned. Um, you, you know, when he had his plane crash, you know, there was no yeah. doubt they were trying to bump him off, and they, they put the frighteners on him. And of course, he's quite happy. But he's in, in the pay of. Um, oh, uh, what are the people who funded uh, your man? Mercer. Mercer. Mercers, yeah, it's the Mercers. So that, you know, that's the, you know, that's the score there. My, <laughs> Mercer, there's a name. My, my grandmother's maiden name was Mercer. <laughs> so, uh, okay. Hmm. But yeah, I mean, there, there's the, there's the rub. There's what the did you rub. think of the fact that, because um, I mean, I knew it anyway, but it's only because of the writing that you just put them together in the same place. Um, the the fact that Rishi Sunak used to work for Chris Hone and Chris Hone gave 50 grand to Extinction Rebellion in 2019. <laughs> that's, uh, you know, yeah. it's, yeah. you know, under well, normal circumstances for most people, that should be remarkable. Exactly. Uh, watch, watch, watch the Bank of Ideas thing and they're talking about the money there and who's running the bank account, who are the signatories, what, where is this coming from? It was the same thing, exactly the same. But they used the same tried and trusted methods and the news cycle and things like Twitter, I've got to say things like Twitter, they stop people joining, joining up the dots. And then people don't say joining up the dots anymore because David Icke talks about joining up the dots. But Frank, I, I, I love, yeah, okay. he's got he's got a podcast called um, uh, the, the Dot Joiner podcast or something. Really? Well, do you remember? Course, do you remember when I was do you remember when I was at Real Media? I did a program called Join the Dots. Um, so yeah, that's quite funny because yeah, obviously joining yeah. the dots, that's what it's all about. Yeah, but isn't again, it? Yeah. you see, you were doing good. You were doing good work, and they, you know that can't stand. They have to drive that off the tracks because, um, and and so people like David Icke say using a term such as that stops people using it because they don't want to be associated with him as a you know as a figure of ridicule. Um, so this, this it's quite funny because even Alex Jones is the one that said that. Um, David Icke is like the turd in the punch bowl. He swims in all this beautiful punch, all this great truth that he does speak. But the turd in the punch bowl is 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 the lizard people. And then everybody laughs. Right. But of course, you know, Alex Jones is a turd in his own lunch, in his own um, punch sure. bowl as well. For so, sure. you know, it's turds all the way down, mate. Turds all the way down. <laughs> I love it. I thought you were going to say turtles for a moment. But yeah. Yes, I get it. Um, just to say one thing in, in defence of David, because, you know, David Graeber, because, of course, one, he's not here. I know you said this anyway. 
Oh, but, I, I, um, I, I don't. I, I don't. I, 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 I owe great debt to David intellectually. If the only thing of David's I'd ever read was his 1995 article in the Commoner about why um, 2005, 2005, 2005, why, why Bush had beaten Kerry in the second election, you know, in his second being re-elected. OK, it's a brilliant, brilliant thing. It's like a mini book. Right. Um, but of course, then he was booted out of. I forget which one he was at. Yeah, I think it was a professor at Yale, wasn't he? And but I don't know what the story is. Yeah, yeah. Around the time that he brought out debt, the first five thousand years. Um, yeah. Obvious. I, I, I think he was. Um, <sighs> whether they had something on him or what what it was that you know he's coming to the UK, but he still remains sort of. Well, the, the whole point is that he was having a lot. He was having a lot of difficulties as well. Anyway, I don't know the story, but I just wanted to say this: in mm -hmm. his company, on that particular video that I embedded in the halfway through the blog today, mm -hmm. uh, actually, you know, off camera and even on camera, but certainly off camera, he was he was completely <laughs> skeptical about Extinction Rebellion. Completely, yeah. he did not. He, he did not believe. The he signed the letter. I, I'm sure he did, but I'm just saying. He was deeply sceptical about them. Uh, and you can see that from his tweets as well. Yeah. He really was. You know. Yeah. He, he, he thought it was, a, he like thought it was an engineered thing. Him and met him. I, I never met him. But as I say, I owe him a great intellectual debt just on the commoner article. Because um, he's the one that switched me on to the uh, Paramonides and um, her, oh, really? Heraclitus thing. It's in right. there. Uh, what was it? Right. Uh, the... At the heart of the Western tradition is the argument between Heraclites and Paramonides, which Paramonides won. Um, but, and that's the free will against deter determinism. determinism. Yeah, you quote that, you quote that a lot. Yeah, yeah. I, it, it, I, it, it's just a brilliant insight. It, it, and, and it goes to the core of Calvinism. And Calvinism is the basis of modern capitalism. Well, it is the basis of capitalism full stop. You know, the, 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 you know, the Bank of England was set up by Calvinists. It wasn't set up by uh, by Jews, you know. So, yeah, again, now um, I want to tell you this because I'm probably going to be getting in a lift in a minute and, and cutting off. But um, what was I going to say? I've been listening to Cashless Revolution mm -hmm. about uh, China and it talks it uses the word leapfrog to talk about how they went from having GDP mm. per person the same as Haiti in the 70s to exactly how it is that they managed to get rid of cash in China. Um, and they said that, for example, when Uber turned up 2013, 14, <laughs> then um, people didn't have credit cards. They never had credit cards in China. And that's how they were able to jump from... Yeah. Um, Basically, what's it called? Ten cent essentially created a cryptocurrency for people to exchange things like guns <laughs> and shields mm. and umbrellas in Second Life games. Um, so virtual. So basically, they created a virtual currency for players to exchange virtual things on their game, and Alibaba as well. And they were saying that ten cent. They did a deal with the phone companies where your virtual mm. bill was added onto your phone bill. And then just bit by bit, they talked about how they managed to create this thing. So in the same way that Richard Werner talks about in the 70s, China created the good local banking mm. in order to fund local government and local uh, business. In the same way that he talks about that, they also talk about what the People's Bank of China did uh, in order to allow experimentation at that fintech level. Mm. Where they basically, I think they called it improvised, some, something like controlled improvisation or something like that. But it was basically a case of, they quoted Deng Xiaoping saying, some people get richer quicker than others. And they basically said, go for it, experiment. Of course, some people will get burned, but we're going to look away. And once you get too big to fail, then of course, we're going to expect you to hand over the data, etc. Mm. Uh, that type of thing. So it's just interesting to listen to how they did it. Um, yeah. And a, uh, but, and a, do you know, uh, yeah. let's just look at that. 
you know, how they did it. Now, who are they? What, you know, um, China? Yeah, good question. Good question. It, so I suppose it's a mix of the two Mars, Jack and Pony Ma, and their companies, but then also how it came about that the Chinese authorities R- Ranjian, let it grow in, and then took it over. In in terms of they, okay, um, what you've just described in China, okay, the analog for it, it, it is is Facebook as well and youtube yeah. and and yes. you know it's the story of the internet in general not yeah. not china in particular sure but, um i mean it, it it is the international banking um and the central banking um cartel which revolves around the federal reserve and the bank of england with 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 yeah. with, 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 with um you know with 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 with, with satellite players who were puppets basically um you know including the ecb now that that that's where the action lies and then where you really uh, the stuff we talked about on artar yeah artar is the model there's, there's no question absolutely no question china isn't the model um but I, i'm i was talking to my sisters yesterday about um uh why Russia and China appear to get on. And I think what it is, is they accept each other's differences and have a better idea of those differences. The problem with the Calvinist deterministic view on um, uh, uh, the human condition, you know, how things should be done, you know, the idea of predestination in Calvinism, you know, that's pure chosenness. The best article about that is actually by Thierry Messon. Um, there's an article on um, um, Wiki Spooks uh, of his on, on, on Calvinism uh, and, 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 and banking um, and, and also the links between Calvinism and Zionism. And Zionism is, is, is a political thing, but it's not it, it isn't a Jewish thing. It's a it, it's a Calvinist thing. Um, and and so you, you get back to Oliver Cromwell and you get back to, um, you know, basically you get back to the English Civil War and then you get get to the um, the Whig Parliament Usury. and and all the rest of it. Usury. So, well, I mean, usury. Yeah, well, usury is a bit a kind of a bit player in, in a way. Um, it, 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 it's it, debt usury is a good way of controlling people through debt or whatever. Um, but the um, it is the new Puritanism is upon us, and it's Puritans and Calvinist Puritans that basically created the modern ma- method, the modern capitalism, which has been put on steroids into complete state monopoly capitalism in 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 the USA. And, and the Puritanism at the heart of the founding USA is part of that as well. I mean, it, it's it's this is the bit that isn't said, you see. And, and so when people talk about Zionism, right, the big barrier there is if you talk about Zionism, you must be an anti-Semite. Right. That's how they stop it. in the same way that um, ter- they're, they're turds in punch bowls. That's 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 the thing. Um, so people are easily distracted uh, uh, so so the other one this, this is kind of a bit off the wall the the black woman that that had a go at the queen's lady in waiting and they I, I think it's disgraceful how they're t- treating that that elderly woman you know um asking uh, I, 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 embry paul embry i saw he, he he had a tweet saying it's not racist to ask someone where they come from you know uh and 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 um, so in the Black Power movement, right, in the 60s, you know, Muhammad Ali and all the rest of it, the Black Panthers, they absolutely bent over backwards for African-Americans to embrace their you know, massively rich and storied history of, of Africa, you know, painting Africa as a victim. You know, so, so I, I don't know. You know, it, it's not an insult to say, you know, do you 
Do you know anything about your family lineage? You know, has your has your whole history been stolen by an episode of slavery? But not not all uh, African Americans and and, and 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 Black Britons or whatever. Not all of them come from that slavery thing because there's been immigration since then. But some do. So, so, so some some people won't know, and their 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 culture will have been stolen from them. But that's true of Scots, Irish, and Welsh people, and also of the English. The the English have, have been robbed of their culture by the same by by the same sort of imperial um, imperial power structure. Um, but you you have to know well, in something that case, about you in have that, to know in about, that, about that case, um, Yeah. No, I mean I think you're making a very good point. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think you are making a good point. I think it's just interesting also that we live now in a time where, you know, we're very GDPR and it's not just what you ask, it's the way that you ask it and stuff like that, because obviously we weren't there. I think, yeah, she was dressed as she was beautifully, uh, it would appear. Uh, was, and... was she actually dressed in Nigerian costume or? I don't know, but she was dressed in in what people might think is African uh, yeah. clothing. Yeah, which is like, I, I love I love all that, you know. I mean, like, like well, I mean, well, my mother, my mother used to go to work every day in a sari, mm -hmm. uh, and she worked in, as a psychiatric doctor. I have never come across anybody who goes to work in a sari every day in this country, but my mum did. And I, I thought that... one of our secretaries that when I worked at Shell used to wear a sari occasionally in, in, into work. Yeah, I, so yeah. I, I just thought I didn't realise. I just assumed it was normal. Um, but now I realise actually hardly anybody does that. Um, yeah. And and so had somebody said to my mum, where are you from? Obviously, we're talking about 40, 50 years ago. She'd have obviously <laughs> just said, I'm from Sri Lanka. Full stop. Yeah. No problem. Um, but I think. You know, that you see, it's, it, it's part of the same thing you're talking about, about this mock outrage. That story would fit into your blog today quite nicely. But uh, again, um, you know, it, it's, you know, Ali G used to have a line, is it because I is black? You know, yeah. you, you know, which, which is I, I mean, I think Ali G is hilarious, but I've got a really puerile, childish sense of humour. I know it's one that we share because we both laugh when you say fudge packers. <laughs> yeah, well, no, I'm guilty as charged. I mean, the thing, the thing about the thing about Ali G was first time, first time Ali G I ever saw Ali G. I was in Manchester with a friend who was also brown, and uh, he asked Jacob Rees Mogg on uh, some sort of a Channel Four program. He asked him. What you you know you know about class, and then he said, "What class is Packies in?" Yeah. And, <laughs> and and me and my friend, we actually thought he was one of us, so we burst out laughing. And it took a while it took a while to realise that he's an Arab Jew. You know, yes. he's a Jew, and he's very likely an Arab Jew. You know, you know, Sephardi, whatever you call it. And so, you know, bit by bit. I got more and more, I, I felt more and more violated by Ali G. Um, uh, but I do think that he is extremely funny. And I also know that uh, the guy himself, um, he went to Paris to train with the um, kind of like the physical comedians. That's why, that's one of the reasons why his yeah. body language is so good. You know, like, you know, he, he can, he physically moves in a way yeah. that makes you feel really awkward. He knows how to do it. Um, so, you know, I'm not going to pretend that he can't tell a story and that he's not, uh, you know, like he's a comedy genius. Yeah. You know? I mean, I, it, 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 I don't know what's like it. I, but you know, I, I remember at the Olympics when they played the, uh, uh, what, the Kurdistanish anthem from Ali G rather than oh, the, the real Kazakh, one? Kazakh, Kazakh, but, Kazakh. But Kazakh by mistake. <laughs> I mean, that is hilarious. I mean, it is just funny. I mean, and, and you know, I, I mean, it's funny. It, a lot of it, it is offensive, a lot of it, you know, but but it's still funny. It's comedy. I think, yeah, I mean, I think, the thing I, is, I, you know, is it punching down? I, I'm not sure that it is, you know. Of so, course it is. Of course it is. Roger, you think I'll it put is? it this way. Of course it is. I think white people often 
assume and Jewish people they often assume Ali G is amazing bloody bloody blah, blah, blah but the thing is that he I know that he goes after rednecks in America and stuff like that but he's um you know but I mean the thing is that this is always going to be the case people that did stuff that was funny in the 80s and 90s uh, occasionally have to sort of you know have a bit of a rethink today what's his name David Baddiel right David Baddiel oh well I uh, saw that about him as well I mean I, I, like it's it's a difficult one. The, the 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 person that annoys me more than anyone at the moment is that um the Russian guy Kosin or whatever. You know, Never heard I mean, of him. Oh, oh, he he does uh, trigonometry with that other comedian, and I think. Oh, I, British... I, I think I think I watched that for a split second. I won't watch that. Oh well, the the, the English guy is is a really funny guy, and and Kosin... he's one of the Russian. He's one of the Russian, really. He's Russian. Yeah, he's a Russian Jew. I thought right. they were both. I thought they were both English Jews. He's sure. a, he's a clever guy, right? But he's not that clever. That this is the point. He's what passes for clever these days. But you put them next to Jonathan Miller, and they're just ignoramuses. Jonathan Miller's died, right? Or, 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 died. Or, or, or Peter Ustinov, you know. Yeah. Um, you know. Um. I, so there's a guy who you like, who I don't. Uh, there's many guys, but um, <laughs> what's his name? Starkey. Right. Oh, my uh, God. I, I think I, David Starkey is a towering intellect. He's a brilliant historian. I, I, I watch his stuff now and, and he's been yeah. sort of basically drummed out the brownies. Well, the thing <laughs> is that he does he does say things that personally I don't like. I mean, you know, when I say that, that doesn't mean. Yeah, but, but you, you, yeah. you know me, Roger, you know me as far as I'm concerned. I'm happy for everyone to say whatever they like. Yeah, right? you're, because, you're, in, you're you're intellectual. Yeah. You, you know, but, you can you can argue back. You know, but with um, Starkey, with Starkey, what was funny was this. And again, the other thing is this: I reserve a hundred percent the right to be wrong about anything. You know, and I am yeah. <laughs> often. And so <laughs> on that basis, you know, everyone should be allowed to say whatever they like. Hmm. So Starkey, he said this, which for me is total condescension. Actually. Oh, brilliant. Starkey basically said to the guys at trigonometry, you lot, you lot are in a special position. <laughs> he was basically talking to them on the basis that they're Jewish, right? He goes, <laughs> yours, he goes, you're special because you're the biggest victims in the whole world. And everyone else is jealous. You know, the Palestinians, the Nigerians, all the slavery, all of these people, they're jealous because they'll never, ever be as big a victim as you. And I just thought, oh, my God, what a way to behave. Fucking hell. <laughs> you know, the white the white guy lectures the Jew on how the Jew is such a fucking, you know, receives the accolade of victim number one, you know, above the X's and the Y's. I was just like, oh, my God. And, of course, they farm that as much as they could on TikTok and stuff yeah, like but, that. But, 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 I mean, that's Ali G, you know, what class are packies then? That, that as a as a joke, it's the same, it's the same sort of sentiment that, that, um, that Starkey's getting at. I mean, there there is a you know the class system is an imperial class system, and you know we you know but we have Starkey an oligarchy. Make, Starkey wasn't making a joke about it, you know. I mean, he was it was <laughs> fun. I mean, it was funny. The problem yeah. was Starkey Starkey was taking himself seriously. I, and, uh, uh, I've got to go and eat my my supper. It's going cold, so I'm. I, okay, I'm yeah, sorry, good to talk again. to you. Yeah, thanks. Mate, for look, it's great talking. Sure. Let's talk again, and we'll, we'll have to do you know do one of our videos or whatever but i i think your blog um and, and we should put the lady in waiting in part of you know having a discussion about that um, and okay, I've, stuff we've just I've been talking about this, it's really really on point i think okay i was recording this by the way so i might put it up anyway yeah. all right nice one all right then cheers around bye cheers.